with Uncle Dave. I'm having a huge, I don't know if you can't see it, but it is a baked potato with sour cream and a fucking massive T-bone steak. Let's see if I can get this in camera. Camera. As big as my fucking face. Yeah. See how far I get into that. And from my beverage. Oh, sookie, sookie. Dr. Pepper, strawberries, and cream. This shit is the bomb. Okay. Here we go. Wait for it. I don't know if that's My dust is on like two, two gulps. Well, two different times. Go, 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 go. Once, and go, 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 go. Flex. My mouth is salivating waiting for that Dr. Pepper. First, I'll start with a little bit of baked potato. A little bit of baked potato. Sour cream. Two thumbs up. Okay. Watch us on YouTube. Hi, this is Attorney Mike Graham coming to you from Chicago as usual. Let's have some more of that baked potato. Hey, oh, wait, you know what I need? Sodium free, no salt. That salty flavor, but yet without sodium. My guilty pleasure. Actually, these are my guilty pleasure. Dr. Pepper. My frozen cup, my icy cup. Once I start drinking that shit, I can't stop. I can't stop, man. I can't stop. I don't know what we should watch. I don't want to be copyrighted. A copyright strike. One hundred. Every day keeps it one hundred. Yes. Never ever lie to your judge. 
Old Squishy Gardeners Courtroom. Your David Jackson. Yes, Sean. 19 dash 3352. Raise your right hand, sir. You saw the Twitter or coming statement to you today. Who do you have to do? There's nothing but the truth so far. You got it. Yes, Sean. I'm going to in this clause number, it's a first amendment motion to revoke the 1983 declaration. Oh, I'm going to take them. 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 I'm going to take we were placed on a seven years to prison for unadjudicated probation for a bank arrest and detention with the motor vehicle. Was a third degree felony? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. Allegation one states you committed the what was he put in? Uh, I believe all of them, Your Honor. One states you committed the offensive theft of a car on that on April 20th. I'm sorry, Your Honor. That was refused, Your Honor. So that one. Sorry, but so, 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 so yeah. I so forgot about you change your story. Yes, I'll change my story. We're, we're not clean true to account number one, but I think it's count number two. Let me see. Right. Uh, one, two. Uh, you're doing that one in the money. And the, uh, okay. uh, number two says that David Lionel Jackson, Jr., 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 on or about April 20, 2023, in Jefferson County, Texas, in that you intentionally gave a fictitious name and residence address and date of birth to a peace officer you knew who was a peace officer who had lawfully detained you and had requested the information at the time of the detention, you were a fugitive from justice. And is that true and correct? Yes, um, give it a sign. No, I'm not sure he's a fugitive at the time. I think he just gave a, uh, well, uh, he gave, there's an explanation. I'm going to have to explain. Look, does it matter if he's a fugitive or not? No, that's what I'm saying. If there's a question about it, we'll get back to the fugitive on that. Okay? Yeah. So that everybody is listening. Not. I don't think that's going to make a difference. That's what I'm saying. I don't think you're going to hang up the rest of everything else, are, but I have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any objection? I'm going to pay down the fortune. And at the time of the detention, the defendant was a PB from justice. No objection. And what you is against the piece of dignity of the state. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, you be true to this? Three states, you shall be avoid injurious or vicious habits by possessing a firearm. That can be rewrite as directed by the court. It should say, you fail to avoid injurious or vicious habits as directed by the court by possessing a firearm. It should be. No objections. Uh, to read, uh, Excuse me. Just think, as we recognize very lady like that's not necessary language. This about that. No objection. So once again, that you fail to avoid injurious or vicious habits by possessing a firearm on or about April twentieth, twenty twenty two, in violation of condition two of defendant's deferred adjudication order. And that should be by knowing the possessing. Um, does the defendant waive uh, I'm adding no one. That's fine, Your Honor, no objection. You're waiving any additional time? To yeah, yes, Your Honor. A lot of under law? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, do you understand that you charge with this? Is that true or untrue? True. Four, you failed to immediately report to the probation officer you were arrest. And actually, none of these are good because or which arrest would that be? There is nothing about an arrest up to this point. Um, we're going to say that. That's, that's just not well written. Five. 
you provided a urine sample on or about August 9th, 2022, which showed the presence of tetrahydrophenol or marijuana. Is that true? Good job. This case is boring. Also, are you pleading through the allegations two, three, and five of this person in the motion to report and adjudicate probation voluntarily, knowingly, intelligently, and because those are true as they are alleged? Yes, sir. You understand by pleading through one or more of these, that is enough to grant a uh, this motion to revoke probation. If your probation to be revoked, you can be found guilty and sentenced up for a full range of punishment. And this is a third degree felony, which means you're looking at no less than two or more than 10 years confinement in prison. Oh. Knowing that, you insist on pleading truth. Yes, sir. I find you are pleading truth voluntarily. You understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading truth. No, I don't think I'm letting the court decide this one. Yeah, I, I like to call my time just to go over some of these allegations. Okay. David, uh, you heard some of the allegations made against you. The first one I want to talk about is the fail to ID. Uh, you pled true to that because you didn't, I guess, clarify, but, but what ultimately happened? What name did you give the officer? <laughs> The name that I gave to the officer was David Jackson. Right. And I am the court. So me being the court, when they put me into jail, they actually put me in and my dad. So yes, you did, did not give him the full correct name because you didn't add it add additional part in there, but it wasn't an attempt to hide your name, was it? As far as you were really talking. You weren't trying to avoid being known as David Jackson. You just didn't give the rest of the full name. Okay, all right. So, uh, so the intent was not to try to mislead the officers. You didn't think to give them the rest of the name because you're a fourth. Okay, all right. Um, and you, at one point you did uh, uh, use some marijuana. Okay, all right. And you knew you weren't supposed to do that, but you did anyway, right? Okay, all right. And did, oh yes, speak up, here. And uh, you did fail to tell your probation officer about when you got arrested. Is that right? Yes. Sir. Okay. Why did you not tell the officer about that? I actually wasn't aware of it at the time. Okay. And she went, she actually, you know, um, first got on probation, she actually went down with all the rules with me, but I actually, I wasn't aware of doing okay. that. No. All right. Uh, so, but, but otherwise, besides the, the, the violation where you used some drugs and didn't report, how have you been doing on probation since then? I've been reporting every time on my report date. I finished all of my community service within the first year. I had six hundred dollars of community service. I finished all of them within a year, so I did. As long as I finished all my community service within the first year of adjudication, I was able to get three hundred credited. So I was able to finish um, community service within okay. that time. Okay. So you've been checking in duty community service. Doing everything you thought you were supposed to be doing. Yes, I've got the one. Okay. And uh, as far as money goes, you've been paying all your money? Yes, okay. I've been paying all my money. Okay, now currently you are currently behind right now, right? Right. Okay. And I'm going to get into that. And there's a reason why you're behind, right? Yes. One of our last court dates when you were supposed to be here, you did not show up. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and why didn't you show up? Um, I actually got shot and I had a very, very bad surgery. And Okay. I have to get my stomach cut, and I also have to wear a catheter. That's what I'm wearing right now, currently. Um, I actually got to take urine through a catheter, and I'm still having pains with all uh, that urine. Um, my so you, so you have quite a bit of medical problems going on right now, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, you're recovering, but slowly. Okay. Yes. Right? And, and like I said, you have to uh, release urine out of a catheter. You can't just go to the restroom you used to do, okay. okay? And you don't even know how long this is going to be for, do you? No, I don't. They're still doing surgery, so you're still doing uh, yes. uh, work, yes. and uh, you may get, you may recover fully, you may not, you don't know yet. Okay. I have to get another bladder surgery. You have another bladder surgery coming up, right? Okay. Yes. Well, All right. My world, uh, buddy. You're asking the court to continue on probation. Right? My world. Yes. Okay. You think that you can continue on and, and, and catch up on the money that you owe? Yes. Okay. Man. Okay, you can catch up. Uh, I can catch up. Okay. Uh, as far as community service, you've already done that. Okay. Okay. So you don't have any of that to do, uh, which might be a problem now, but uh, 
Uh, otherwise, you can follow the rules and, and, and do what you need to do. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so that's the way to pass away, Char. Uh, Mr. Jackson, if it says in the report here that you gave the name of uh, Tyrants Jackson, would that be true or false? False, false. Do you have a police officer here? Uh, yes, sir. I can have him here in five minutes. He's right across the street. And I, I spoke with Mr. West, and he yeah. said he's pleading true to this. I can so. tell you, you attempted to deceive me, and you're sunk, okay? That's all I'm going to tell you. I see where, where this is headed, and and that's okay. Uh oh, he's a liar. Your future depends upon the choices you make in this hearing, whether you're going to be honest and forthright or not. But what's happened is, you pleaded true to this number two, and you turned around and testified that you didn't commit the crime. <clears throat> because the elements say you intentionally give a false statement, and you just tried to convince this court that you gave a name. And I'm a junior. I give John Stevens. And not thinking that I'm going to trick somebody into thinking that they're, uh, that there's somebody that's 25 years older than me who's my dad. And he's a senior. But no, what you told me was what you said, and it's on the record. She puts down everything. And it was clear that you gave your correct name. And your correct name it may or may not include the fourth. But nobody's going to call me a liar if I'm not going to accept them if I say I'm John Stevens, even though I don't say it's John Stevens Jr. every time. And but but what he said was not your name that was given. And we're going to bring the police officer in, and I'll give them all the time they need to bring the police officer. But the last thing you want to do can you is rip and lie to me at this stage of your probation. Okay? That's all. Just a warning. Honesty means everything. Everything, everybody makes mistakes. Honesty is an intentional act uh, when, when you're not going to be honest, it's obvious that you're committing an intentional act to deceive, and I'm the last person um, who is your supervising official on a third degree felony if you want to lie. That's all. I'm going to tell and you. Your Honor, just, Next, to, go ahead. Sorry, just to be clear for the record, the name he gave in the actual offense report is Tyrants David Jackson. So the, still the first name was Tyrants, uh, the name that he gave according That's to the what he said. She right. said David Jackson. Yes, sir. Yeah. As opposed to his dad. So, yeah. we're going to I'll give you some time. Yes, sir. They'll be over here right one. Yes, sir. Did you want to get anybody else to put the test up here? You got the. Uh, Your Honor, you want to uh, let me uh, write in here and say if he can pass the witness back to me. I think I can maybe clear that up and then we'll go ahead and do that. I've already sworn him in. No, no. It's to say he committed perjury a little while ago. That's his business. Mm -hmm. But. You're not going to lie to this court. This is this is court of honor, not a deception. Now I'll, I'll pass the witness back. Your Honor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Jackson, you heard a moment ago that the name of Tyrants David Jackson. Do you know a Tyrants David Jackson? Yes, Your Honor. Who's that? That is actually my cousin. Okay. Now, uh, uh, did you add the name Tyrants before you added David Jackson? <laughs> I mean, did you say that name or mention that name to the officer? And where where did you get this name from? So I'm saying, why did you say that? Um, yes, I gave the officer that name, Terrence David Jackson. Okay. And why, why did you lie to me like that? Why would you look me in the eye and under oath and with when I am the determiner of your future? And just lie, bold face lie. You don't think we've been doing this long enough that I, I can we, we we've done this long enough, we can tell that people are telling the truth. And I knew it was. I, I mean it didn't ring true at all. And it didn't take long to ferret it out, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> well, that's no way to handle this problem. I really you know. fell in the hole. We gave you a shovel. To get out, and all you decided to do was dig the hole deeper, not to use it as a tool to get out. Okay. That's a good one. You're not the first person who does that. Uh -huh.
Whoa. Nothing to gain and everything to lose by lying to me. I get just frustrated. It's like walking a car right now. I don't want to see it. This is, this is a, a, a room of choice making. You decide your choices you want. And generally, you have to stand by the ramification of your choices. Damn, yeah, halfway there with this. And your cost you is a bone steak. That's what Sean, that's the only other question I have to make sure to clarify. You know, the state would just call Miss Campos, Alexandria Campos. Raise your hand, you can sign this way or refer. You can say that you may have today. We'll be doing a little bit more about the truth, so help you out. Miss Campos, please state your name for the record. Sandra Campos. And Miss Campos, uh, how are you presently employed? I'm with the Jefferson County Community Supervision. Okay. And Miss Campos, uh, are you familiar with the David Lionel Jackson IV? I am. And do you see him uh, standing here today? Yes, I do. Do you please point and describe what he wearing? Your Honor, State would just ask that the record reflect the witness identified the tenant. Yes. And uh, Ms. Campos, uh, do you supervise Mr. Jackson on uh, probation? I do. Okay. And as part of his terms and conditions, uh, is it that he not use or possess any drug or use of possession of and uh, Prescriptions for any and all medication must be disclosed to your probation officer. Okay. okay. Um, on or about the ninth day of August 2002, <coughs> did Mr. Jackson uh, provide a urine sample uh, to your office? Yes, I did. And did it test uh, show positive for the presence of tetrahydrocannabinol? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and also, uh, did Mr. Jackson on that same date? The ninth day of August 2022, uh, provide a urine sample that showed positive for the met metabolic uh, byproducts of opiates. Yes. Whoa. And those were both uh, violations of Condition 10 of the defendant's uh, probation order. Okay. Uh, pass the witness. Uh, how's Mr. Jackson been doing on probation since uh, uh, being released after this motion of been filed? Since he's been on bond. Um, he reports as directed. Uh, he did fill that drug test while on bond. Um, he has the GPS monitored, no violation, no zone violations, but he does have a charging issue like often, like a okay. phone charger. Um, he's currently behind two sixty nine um dollars, but I know he's not working because he's health condition at the moment. Okay. And as far as health condition, you heard him talk about kind of his health condition earlier. Do you uh? Uh, does that all sound correct? Yes. Okay. Because you were informed of this, this situation as well. Even you and I talked last quarter about it, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, uh, and is he also true that he's done his community service? Yes. Okay. So that, what he testified earlier, is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so he has, besides picking up this new belt ID and belt ID. That guy's a makes me been, nervous. He's pretty good, though, right? Yes. Relatively. I mean, I don't know why, but uh, no, major, no other major concerns. <laughs> You're just like That's a slob. Uh, no further questions. What is your statement? I'll go first, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I, we were going to request for Mr. Jackson to continue on probation. Uh, we have, in essence, two violations. We have him committing the new offensive tell to ID, and you heard of his testimony. He, he, he admitted that he did tell the wrong name, um, uh, and he's going to. Eventually, pay the price for that because we're going to have to go to misdemeanor court and take care of that. That's 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 going to be there, okay? Um, and then he failed one drug test here uh, uh, while he was out on bond, which is is bad, uh, but uh, uh, it is what it is. I would this way it argue is. to let him continue on probation, or even if he wanted to continue to hold it in abeyance for some time out future, how the court wanted to do it uh, to see how he's how he's uh, going to be doing in the future, also. His recovery. He's got some medical issues coming out. Got surgeries. That's also going to be a burden on the county if we put him in the in the jail for now, or the state to take care of all of his recovery and his medical care from here on out. Um, if these violations were greater, I, I wouldn't argue that. I wouldn't even bring that up. But I think the fact is, it's just a, 
it's a, I don't think any, any crimes matter because all crimes are serious, but in our system, it's a class B, it's, it's a smaller uh, crime here, felt ID. Um, and THC, it's marijuana. If this was met or PCP or something different, I, I know how the court feels about that, but we're talking about one felt for, for marijuana. Uh, he hasn't felt since then. Uh, there was no reports of that before that time. Uh, so I would uh, give him a chance to continue on and see how, how he does. As the court's aware, uh, Mr. Jackson uh, obviously uh, put true to possessing a firearm in uh, violation of his probation conditions as well as testing positive to the opiates and the Um He's also as he testified, been shot as well, uh, and does have health conditions as the well, uh, that's that's all about. Nobody really let me know much about the details on that. I'm not quite sure, Your Honor. What what happened there? Why did you, you shot? Why did you shot? What what happened there? I'm well, just instant bystander. It was. I can't hear you talk about it. I'm, I'm sorry. You got to speak up, sir. Yes, Your Honor. I was actually truthful. Yes, I understand. Yes, sir. I was actually an uh, innocent bystander. I was caught in the middle of a crossfire. I was grazed in my head, and I was actually shot in my lower back that actually came out through my bladder. When was that? That happened November 7th. Last year? Of 2022. Yes. Mm -hmm. What were the circumstances? Was somebody arrested or anything like that? I still, I'm still currently trying to catch up. Were the police called out at the scene? Yes, yes. I actually called the police. Yes. I'm not aware of a case that we had, Your Honor. And then just uh, probation. Uh, we're finding out. I find out. I found out on uh, a court date, and I did see him in office, and is like going to explain that he was shot. Um, but we like, don't know anything about him being shot. Yeah. Were the circumstances were out there? I was made aware of it the night before, or when it happened, they called my office the next morning because he was supposed to be in court. Because we actually showed up, the three of us, to court, and we got told, and then uh, I think your order, one of the medics, or somebody confirmed that he was, in fact, in the hospital at the time. But, okay. but I don't know what the circumstances are. Uh, do you know the name of the individual? I, I, I don't know. Anything. But he said he called the police. I don't know. Or did you call the police? Or? I ran some uh, uh, nearby neighbor door and knocked on the door and I just laid there. And the police, police showed up. Right? Yeah. yeah, police showed up. They most haven't happened. done an investigation. Do you remember what they did? investigation? Do you remember what they did? That was November, November 7th. November 7th? It was November 7th. Where? What's he just said? What street? What, what, what? Was it a street in a residence or a business? Uh, it was a street. He's lying. George Trump. Around, um, what's that area? Wangle. And that's a very quiet area. Wangle, Auckland College. Mm hmm. Well, Georgetown area. So what were you doing there? Please meet him now. What were you doing? I was there at that time. Sure. What were you doing there? Well, are you in that? Area? Yeah, you're jumping back a little bit up here. I was actually staying there. Staying there? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, living there was an it was a uh, temporary residence. Temporary residence. Did you know that? Like, I don't know. Everything you said just did sleep in home. We don't know that. And I'm about to ask about what time this happened. But you're out and about. What time did this happen? I don't want to go. What time did it happen? Because we're going to call, we're going to call, there'll be a police report. What time? Roughly. Was it, was it night? Was it night time or day time? It was most definitely night time. I, I, I can't remember the time. I was, I remember I passed out probably roughly around nine o'clock. Around late eight o'clock, early nine o'clock, around that time. Around late eight o'clock, around that time. <clears throat> Look into that, please. Yes, sir. Find out. They just they should make sure that you're not burping or curfew. But we certainly, you're living some, you're just 
blurt it out, you're, you're living over there. We don't know that. Do we? No. That's something else you split there. That was good. I don't think it is. Why were you staying there? That was that was actually my mom's address. Mm-hmm. And I was over there. She just currently had a show. And actually around that area, it's a lot of carjacking around that time. And I went out at the wrong time to check the mail and I got shot. And I don't know who shot me. I don't know anything. I ran and feared for my life. If you want to check the mail, you don't need to run. You're like right there at your mailbox. But I can name for sure it happened around like late eight o'clock. It was nighttime. No, but you can't hurt you from being a and I'm in here tonight at 10. He says you live in uh, mm-hmm. Cumberland. No, I don't live there. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. I can't finish it. I don't think that's what the price is. Yeah, I don't What are you doing? Half of it. What was it? That doesn't have his twin. East Lucas. But that's not where this at. No, that's not where it's at. That's where I stay. With my gentle mother. But it's supposed to be not where you are. When you change your residence. No, I still I stay in between. You want to I have to know where you sleep at night. Every night. When you see, I, I mean, that would, if that were true, we'd have probation officer, we'd have probationers sleeping in a different place every night. We'd never know where they are. We're supposed to know where you are so we can supervise you. Yes, sir. Where are you staying? Where are you? I stay with my grandmother. That's not what you told her. I think what he's saying is that his, his permanent address is his address address is the loop. Huh? Of the but I think that he's saying that he has was... to know where you are so that we can monitor if necessary. Yes, sir. We can go Jeez. find you. Snaps get out of my hand like a little bit. Otherwise, shark. you're not on super. We're not supervising. We don't know where you are. It happened. Before I make every night, I make sure I'm in the house by 10 o'clock. Before uh, 10 o'clock, which house we don't know which house. It does We how can we monitor you if you're somewhere on this planet with some with seven billion homes on the planet? How are we supposed to be able to supervise you? I don't get you said, Well, I was in it, and how do we know? We don't know where you are. We ought to be able to go walk up to the door, knock on the door, and say, Hello, where are you? And then you come on up and you come up with the I am. Good. Thank you. You did well. And you were not. He was on ankle run at the time, you know, so it wasn't. So, for the worst, it makes sense. Yeah, no, we can't be tracking them down with an ankle run. And I think his issue is, he might not be able to explain it really well, is that he was staying with his mom for a night or so. It wasn't just. Well, he didn't start by staring and didn't go off when it was off because <laughs> he's got an honesty issue. I think some of that might be fear, Your Honor. I think he's fear. very, very very. Are you all right? Fear of telling, telling a lie on the road. I understand. That's very <laughs> Yeah, 13 days. But you won't get much time credit if I sent you to 10 years. Any violation is not to do that. 13 days then get you out of prison earlier. All right. What do y'all say? Your Honor, just based on the you know, you know, John. <laughs> you know, John, the court's aware of the issues court here. Case. Yeah. Uh, a little slow in the beginning, uh, but now, the court, uh, once you got caught lying. Well, I know he's got health conditions, uh, so I'm not, you know, with the jail being able to take care of that, I'm not sure. Um, you have to finish that state. But obviously, throughout the night, a little here, a little there. What health conditions? Yes. What potatoes. requires you to have oh, medical assistance every day? Mashed potatoes. How the hell are you? Medical assistance every day. Set on my face. I have a catheter. You little boy. That thing out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I didn't have I didn't have the planet taken care of me. Nope. I mean, I could care myself on that, and I could, uh, like everybody else, can take really care of me. unless you have special circumstances. A catheter doesn't mean that you can't take care of yourself. Yeah, and that was I said, I said, did you go to the doctor? I said, did you worry? I'm going to follow the doorway. Every time I have another doctor, I actually have another which is in March. Fatty. March 26th. Okay. Do you have this? Of course, did you have, have another door. surgery coming up? Do you have that scheduled yet, or are you going to find that out? Oh, okay. So I'm going to find that out. March 26th. I know I, I need I'm surgery, done. but I will get Steak has defeated me. On March 27th. Well, I can't cut it, first of all. It's hard to cut. I mean, it's not a hard steak. It's just, I have a horrible time with my March 27th is a Wednesday. Yeah. Anything else? That's not Just the fact that I'm always using. I think this is not a situation where we want to put this individual in jail. Maybe it is. I said, I, this is where I don't think we want to put him in custody because of his medical situation right now. I'm um, in this group. So. He's done enough to convince me that he's going to need some tinkering. So, I'm going to find it. Nothing further. There is sufficient evidence to support the first amendment motion if the revoke on a duty created probation by a preponderance of the evidence of greater as allegations two, three, and five have been proven true. And that that is enough to grant this motion and revoke the probation. I want to find, though, that. I'm going, uh, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, is uh, order an amendment. I'm going to continue probation. You're going to do 30 days in the county jail on weekends, successive weekends. That's what. And you're going to get two days, so that means you're going to do 15 weekends. I can do that. Just do this, I think. Don't just talk. The walk, the walk. That's what's one said. But okay, <laughs> and your failure to be forthright and flirting around with these violations and not keeping the probation officer completely informed about your whereabouts. Uh, I don't like this. And I want to follow up. I want to. I would like to know about your sure. report and see what the circumstances were. I don't want to hear about him person and her view. Being out, they got bullet on our watch when he's. Well, we don't know where the heck he really is. That's not necessary. For us to supervise, we have to know where you want to. But you're taking this, and I think right now I, I stay with my grandma, and my mother just moved with us, and she just had a stroke, so I'm having to take care of really both of them because. They well, both. You gotta take things over the line. I mean, you gotta be I'm not right. any more responsible than you acted, sir. It's a company. So, you know, I think we're all in agreement with that. But again, another thing is be honest. Yes, you know, get your own nose. Just when I get you a lie, old face to this court, that's just not right. Because things are always, we can work things out. Sometimes it's things, sometimes it's just easy to fix. But to play cat and mouse, and I can see with the truth is no way of handling your responsibilities with this probation. And the probation officer, yeah. she's your wife. Mom. Every every probationer trips. Every one of them trips sometime along probation. So there's a boy right and they're honest about it. And it works out for the most part fine. Without any bruising. Mm -hmm. um, so you begin uh, tomorrow on the four six o'clock. It's our doorbell. And each weekend, each Friday there, it's our doorbell. Thirty days in service on the weekends, and also we don't kind of. Yes, sir. I'll check. But I didn't see him in the system as a I searched under victim name. There was not an incident, but I'll call one of my PD and ask about that date, and I'll call up with Daniel. But okay, all right. All right. We do want to see him that day. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Carlos Garcia is next. It was a pretty good, a pretty good shield. What did Johnny Carson say? I think that's used to say it that way. <clears throat> okay. In this stream.
is how much of my steak I had left. Got like a third of it. Maybe a quarter of it. I got a third. Okay. Oh, I'm so full. So that was T-bone steak, mashed uh, baked potato with sour cream, and a Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. Oh, oh, oh I feel it. Feel the sleepiness. You get my stomach full, I'm right to sleep. Never fails. Oh, man. It's like an aphrodisiac. Okay. This is your Uncle Dave. Mom's Kitchen. Signing off. Peace.